This video will be a tutorial video explaining how my random dig site uh, tool works. So what this tool does is it's a Python tool that randomizes the research trees in the game to parameters, uh, to particular specifications you set. Um, this tool will require not just Python to use, but also Cobra tools, another uh, JWE2 modding tool that uses Python. Um, so the dig site randomization will create the research trees and then Cobra tools is used to take the research trees and put them into the game. Uh, and then what you'll get in game will be something like this, where you get random dinosaurs unlocked at different random research tiers. Uh, and they get shuffled around to not always be where you would expect them to be. Um, so when you download the random dig site tool, you'll be downloading these three files that you'll see here, config.txt, jwstats.csv, and randomdigs.py. So the randomdigs.py is the Python tool that randomizes the research trees for you to create the random dig site effect in-game. Um, and then the config and the JWE stats are just two files that are um, that support that code. Uh, JWE stats has all of the uh, dinosaur information the code needs to run and config has a few um, parameters you can set that uh, affect how the outputs of the code work. If you open up the config file, this is what you'll see. Uh, there's not too many things currently in here. Might add some more in the future. Uh, you see ban list, forest, and blank. Ban list is just a list, um, comma separated, of different keywords that you want to ban from the dig site randomization. This can be um, basically anything in the JWE stat CSV file. Um, so you can ban uh, by dinosaur types, specific names, eras, canonicity. Um, you can ban things like hybrids or carnivores. There's all sorts of different options you can do here. Um, and then forced is the counterpart of ban list where you could do like anything you force overrules the ban. So if you do a ban list on ceratopsians, it'll remove all ceratopsians from the randomizer. And then if you put triceratops in forced, it would add triceratops back in, making it so that you've banned every ceratopsian except for triceratops. Um, and then blank here is just a true-false toggle uh, for the skin randomization feature, um, which we'll get to later that controls whether or not it includes blank as a viable skin color to use in that. And here's a quick look at the uh, GWE stat CSV file. You can see the column headers across the top and then each of the individual rows is a different dinosaur. And you can see just the, the large amount of information contained in here, either for use with the ban list or for use directly within the code itself. Um, if you're not playing with the ban list, you never need to look at this or the config file for that matter. But any anything listed in here is something you should be able to ban on in the config file. Although the config file banning is not rigorously tested, so there could be glitches in the code. Um, definitely reach out if you run into any issues with that. But uh, you can use this to also remove DLC creatures. Um, the last column DLC is needed for the way the research trees generate because they specify whether or not creatures are from DLCs, but you can use it to ban any of the dinosaur packs or DLCs you don't have. Now, to use the dig site randomization tool, you'll need Python. Uh, it shouldn't matter if you have Python 2 or 3, but I built the tool in Python 3, so that's the safer thing to do, use the new newer version of Python. Um, the tool uses the sys random and time modules, which should all be defaults, if I'm not mistaken. So you shouldn't have to install any additional modules to make this work. So the first thing you'll need to do to run the uh, Python dig site randomizer tool is you'll need to navigate to where uh, randomdigs.py lives. You can do that through a directory change command in your uh, terminal window, such as this. Uh, I, it, mine is currently just stored in a folder on my desktop. The folder is dig site randomizer, desktop is the desktop. So then you can see that the path updates to show that we're in that folder there. And then you can simply do uh, Python space, and then the name of the tool, which is randomdigs.py. Now, this is set up to take at least one additional argument, which is how many dinosaurs you want included in the research randomization. So if you set this to 15, the research trees will randomize to only have 15. If you set this to 103 or any number higher than that, it'll randomize the full research tree. 
including every dinosaur in the game. And there's a balancing scheme included um, in the code that makes sure you have first, you always make sure that first you have one of the normal starting dinosaurs or something equivalently easy to research and dig up um, immediately available. So like Ceratosaurus, Dilophosaurus, etc. One of those is always preserved. Um, and then I've added like Kentrosaurus and a few other creatures so that there's 10 options for like the starting dinosaur. Um, and then it will select uh, random dinosaurs if your um, if the number you provided is very low. If the number reaches a certain threshold, it'll make sure that there's like a Ceratopsy and a Sauropod, a Stegosaur, etc. Um, and if you keep increasing the size of the numbers, eventually it'll go even finer and it'll pick out like a Hoangosaurian Stegosaur and a normal Stegosaur Stegosaur and you know a, a chasmosaurine and a centrosaurine for the ceratopsians and stuff like that and it doesn't go any further beyond guaranteeing uh that split so once you get past that threshold in the mid 20s for different finer categories of dinosaurs everything after that is just random uh, it does balance based on research tiers the mod itself uh changes up how dinosaur research works a little bit Instead of uh, dinosaurs unlocking all the way up to four stars, unlocks finish at three stars, so you have time to enjoy every dinosaur in your park. Um, so there's unlocks at 0, 0.51, 1.52, 2.5, and 3. So essentially seven tiers of research unlocks. For balancing purposes, uh, all dinosaurs now unlock automatically with no prerequisites other than star rating. Um, so that technically makes the game a little easier because you don't have to research the dinosaurs. But... I think it's a fair compromise just in terms of balancing the random dig sites because if you get a bunch of like really high genetic stuff to research early on that kind of sucks um you still have to have of course the high logistics for the digs on things like tyrannosaurus and ankylosaurus so there's still that balancing there for the bigger ticket dinosaurs so to speak i also think the in-game research balancing is kind of dog water for a lot of the high-end things um yeah, so if we want to run this, we pick the amount of dinosaurs we want to randomize. So say we do like 50. Um, and then there is an additional option here you can do. If you want this to be just completely random, you can add in random afterwards as an additional command. So uh, the Python command, the name of the code is the second thing. Space in between those two. Space the number, the numbers required to run this. And then space optional argument for whether or not you want to do random and that can be all lowercase all uppercase or capital r lowercase andum <laughs> and so you can run that uh, and then you'll just see another command line show up when it's done running and that's how you know when it's completed um, there's no printouts on screen i should probably add something we'll see about doing that in the future what you will see is you'll see a bunch of new files that have shown up in uh, the directory of randomdigs.py. So you get the individual um, research trees for the three different types of herbivores, the carnivores, the aquatics, and the aerials. And then you get an additional TXT file that's labeled skins and genes with a timestamp afterwards. Um, and so every time you run this, those tech trees will be overwritten if they're left in this directory, but you'll get a new skin and genes um, text file to come out. So the next thing we need to do is we need to inject the new research tree files into uh, GW2. This is done using Cobra tools. So for me, these are the directory my Cobra tools install lives in. And then this here, Python OVL tool GUI.py is the command to launch Cobra tools. So we just hit enter and you'll see a bunch of command line stuff running here as the game or as the, not the game, as the, uh, the code boots up. You'll see a user interface that looks like this for the OVL archive editor. Uh, what you want to do is you want to go open and then you want to navigate to your Jurassic World Evolution 2 install folder. So for me, this is under program files x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, Jurassic World Evolution, uh, Win64. Then you go to OVL data. And under OVL data, you'll see a bunch of different folders uh, for different content patches in the game and DLCs. You're looking for content zero. Um, let me let me let me show this on screen. Okay, so this is the Jurassic World Evolution 2 folder. 
Islands Movies 164. So you click into 164, you get OVL data, you click into OVL data, content zero, you click into content zero, you're looking for main.ovl down here, and then you just hit open. That opens it up into the tool. Now, you'll see this progress bar here at the bottom and very quickly get to 100%, but it is not properly loaded yet. You have to wait. Um, you'll see other progress bars pop up, and it'll take a, a few minutes for it to fully load in. Um, the trick I always find that's useful is if you move this window around on your screen, at least in Windows, or at least for me, it'll start to say OVL Archive Editor not responding. And when it starts to respond again, it's actually done loading everything. You can also look at the terminal window to get some clues as to if it's finished or not. Um, so if we do this here, look at the terminal window, you can see that it says loaded files into GUI in 2.13 seconds. Great, but it's not done processing the files. The files are loaded, but it's still working. Um, so let this run for a few minutes and then come back to it. So you'll see eventually this mapping file status bar show up at the bottom, and that's like the big time consuming process you're waiting for Cobra tools to complete before you can actually edit the files. So the final thing that tells you it's done is when you finally see in the terminal window loaded OVL in some amount of seconds. Then you're good to go. Now that's all loaded. The next step is pretty simple. You just got to go to your uh, dig site randomizer folder. You got to highlight all six of the tech trees and you simply drag them over into the user interface here for the Python uh, OVL archive editor tool and drop them. And you'll see the terminal window update in the back saying loaded files into GUI in, you know, timestamp here. Uh, and then everything there is good to go. You just simply got to go over here and do save. And then you'll see a bunch of stuff shown up here as this works. And the save process will take a little bit of time as well. So you'll need to wait for that to update. All right, and then when that is completed, you'll see this line pop up down here on the terminal window, saved OVL in some amount of seconds, and then you're good to go. You should be ready to launch the game. When you get into game, you will be able to look at your research trees and you'll be able to see the effects of the randomization. So you'll see what looks like this. It'll be a bunch of dinosaurs in a row because the whole tree aspect has effectively been removed because no dinosaur leads directly into another one. You'll see things like Draco Rex here has been unlocked automatically. These are your zero star dinosaurs. And then you'll see where the other ones uh, have randomized to here in the tree as well. And in this case, we did uh, uh, 50 dinosaurs or whatever I think it was. So you can see that some are missing too. And then, yeah, there's uh so the randomization scheme here has some logic to it. Like late game dinosaurs won't randomize to zero. There's a, they're leashed to randomize to research tiers that are somewhat close to where they started. Uh, that's essentially how this works. And uh, yeah, another thing worth mentioning is the hybrids are set up right now to always be included. Um, and so you just may not be able to use these because you don't have the genetic prerequisites in your tree at random and in, in that case uh you're just you're just out of luck right uh, a few other things to note you can get aquatics randomized to be available before the um prerequisite uh technology is unlocked i have a research mod that i'll probably release as well which changes it so that the um, hatcheries for those types are immediately available although they're still very expensive um you know, you'll have to work hard if you want to have an early lagoon or an early um aviary yeah see we got the morphodon here as a zero star unlock so if you look at the skin and genes uh txt file you'll see something that looks like this this is basically showing you uh a randomized genetic sequence that determines what the genes are going to be for the dinosaur and a skin color and pattern that have been randomly selected for that dinosaur species. This is completely optional. You don't need to look at this or use this. It's just an additional um, randomization feature that was included in the original Python tool I made to select dinosaurs randomly, which was a, a user interface based tool that you can find on my GitHub. Um, so for like, if we look at Draco Rex here, we've got uh, zero star unlock. So that's our starter that we rolled. Um, Draco Rex is one of the 10 base starters I've included in the code. Uh, and we see genetic sequence that starts with T followed by a bunch of A's and then there's a C in there. So these are the different gene slots in game, the 10 default gene slots. Uh, Aquatic should have nine. I don't remember if I actually implemented that correctly. Um, if they don't, you can make a judgment. I'll fix it later. 
Uh, so basically the way this works is that if you get an A for adenine as your base pair, that's an unmodified gene. So that starts at whatever it's set to in-game as a default, right? So if Draco Rex has, I don't know, say 25% chance at resilient, 25% resilient would be the A base pair. Um, and then you go C is one genetic pip put in, G is two, and T is three, right? So this first gene here on Draco Rex, I forget which slot this is. Um, that gets plus three, you know, genetic pips put into it for plus 75% to the very first gene. And then C, which I think is strength, the strength gene, um, that gets just plus one, so plus 25%. And that's because Draco Rex only has four, you know, gene mods you can apply to it. And this is, yeah, to reiterate, completely optional. You don't need to do it this way if you don't want to. It's just an additional option if you want, you know, a very random experience. I find it to be interesting because I think it adds a lot of uh, variation to the, the game. You don't just pump, you know, like lifespan or resilience or something into dinosaurs. You got to kind of adapt based on what randomized genetic sequence you've rolled. I think it's kind of fun. Um, and then the skin pattern is just, you know, another additional randomization feature. So SD is... What is SD? Yeah, I've I've done these as um shortened acronyms and I've already forgotten one. GSD is Great Sandy Desert. Um SH is Salar del Hosco. So SD is one of the other ones. It should be pretty obvious in game which skin pattern it is, but I'm just drawing a blank here. And then PE is Pilophylax, RA is Rana, PA is Papa Rana, CH Calcarana, L I Lithobates, like the the abbreviations used should be pretty self-explanatory um these were done in shorthand because the original tool had limited space in the ui there's no reason i can't write these out in the code and i should make that update so that might already be changed when you see this online all right and that should be everything you need to know to run the random dig site tool this is it's worth pointing out that this is made for use with sandbox but it will affect uh challenge mode and chaos theory to some degree um but not consistently the challenge modes and sandboxes function by applying patches to the research trees to change requirements and remove nodes and so that's going to have weird interactions when the sandbox default research trees change um, so you could certainly try to use it with challenge mode and chaos theory but the results may be unpredictable